Wonder Hussy here, up in the beautiful forested mountains of Wyoming. Okay, technically I'm right on the Idaho border. That's Idaho, that's Wyoming. Uh, I camped right here last night. And today I'm gonna hike all the way to the end of this trail where there's supposedly a really cool cave. Actually, a couple of caves. Uh, unfortunately, aside from caves, there's also bear up here. That's right, we're in bear country, and this is their home, not mine, so I have to be respectful of them. But, you know, respect only goes so far. So I'm also carrying bear spray, and you know, bear spray might not work on some bears, so I also have a copy of the Constitution, just in case. Never know, it could be right-wing bear up in these woods here on the Idaho-Wyoming border. This is a pretty conservative part of the country, so I figured it was a safe bet to bring both. And as usual, I got a late start. It was almost 3.45 by the time I set off on this trail. And the cave I want to hike to is only two and a half miles from the trailhead. So it should only take about an hour to get there. Uh, an hour or so to poke around and an hour to get back. But that still means when I get back, it's gonna be dusk. And that's when all the bears really come out. That's when all the crepuscular creatures come to feast. Okay, there's a big word view, crepuscular. It means uh, they come out at dawn and dusk. And I don't wanna be any crepuscular critters dinner. So I better get hiking. Oh, what gorgeous country this is. I'm up in the, well, I'm actually in the Grand Tetons, but I'm on the backside of the Tetons. You know, you go over to Jackson Hole where all them fancy rich folk live. And there's the Grand Teton National Park and well, it's real crowded. But over here on the Idaho side, there's not as many people. There's still a lot of people. I camped, uh, like I showed you on the map, I camped down the road last night and there was a lot of traffic going by including a very loud diesel pickup truck with no fewer than four giant American flags flying and a fifth flag that said, we the people are pissed off. And you probably don't see too many trucks with flags like that over on the Jackson Hole side either. Anyway, I came up here to try and get away from the heat. Okay, obviously it's really hot where I live in Death Valley, but it's hot everywhere. There's a crazy heat wave all over the West right now. And it was like over a hundred degrees in the last few places I went. And in fact, it was so hot I couldn't even camp. I had to stay in motels. So I figured I'd head for the hills and it is much cooler up here. And it's totally beautiful. I mean, we don't have these same plants down where I come from. Looks like it's some kind of little berry. I don't know if that's a huckleberry. I know wild huckleberries grow all over this area, but I don't know enough about it to risk it. But all this stuff is new to me. I mean, these beautiful flowers, these big green leafy bushes, this beautiful bird song. Oh, it's just a great day to be alive and be hiking. Now, apologies if I'm huffing and puffing a little bit, but I am going uphill. I guess this cave is located up a canyon at something like 8,500 feet. I think the trailhead was around 7,000. I know I'm gaining 1,800 feet in elevation on this hike, so that's why I'm breathing heavy. But it feels good to get some cardio, and besides, making a lot of noise breathing and a lot of noise talking to my camera is actually a good thing when you're hiking in bear country, because the last thing you want to do is take a bear by surprise. If you make a lot of noise, yakking and hollering, then they know to get out of your way. And so normally, I'm a little self-conscious if I run into another hiker and I'm blah, 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 blowing to my camera. <laughs> Not today. Although I guess that is one upside to heading out on this trail so late is I probably won't run into very many people once I'm up there. Everybody's already hiking back down and I've already run into a bunch of people. Like I said, I better get moving.
Oh my goodness. Look at this view. Wow. I mean, this wilderness area is called the Jedediah Smith Wilderness Area. And I'm pretty sure Jedediah Smith was a famous mountain man, explorer, mountain man back in the early, mid 1800s. And I can definitely see being a mountain man in this valley. I mean, this looks like a scene straight out of Jeremiah Johnson, one of those mountain men movies. Unbelievable. Uh-oh, what's this? Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's been rained and snowed on over the years, but it says dedicated. Well, actually it says dedicated, <laughs> oopsie, to youth leadership in honor of Orly Holst who gave her life for this program and to Carol Engstrom, Mary Severson, Bernice Malone, Betty Kearney, who lost their lives participating in the program. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, the person who told me about this cave said there's some monument near the cave uh, dedicated to a bunch of schoolgirls who I think were struck by lightning, I guess when they were hiking up or down from this. Those names don't sound like schoolgirls. I mean, Aura Lee, Betty, Bernice. Sounds more like school moms or grandmas, but well, I suppose maybe Betty, Bernice, and Aura Lee were common names for young women, you know, decades ago. So who knows how long ago that happened. I'm going to have to Google those girls now and find out the story. <sighs> Holy cow! Look at this waterfall. Oh my goodness. Boy, it sure is tempting to clamber down there and splash off in that water because I am hot. This last part of the hike is real steep and it's about to get even steeper. So yeah, I'm sweating pretty good, but I better keep going. Wow, there it is. I think this cave is 120 feet high. And the person who told me about it said to be careful of thermal expansion and contraction because apparently a big old rock came loose from the top and almost fell on a hiker once. And I sure don't want that to happen to me. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful this is. I guess this stream comes out of the wind cave, which uh, well, <laughs> it's called the Wind Cave, but I can think of other names I might have called it. Anyway, this trickle of water comes out of the base of it and forms this beautiful waterfall. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And it just cascades down, 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 down. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's go in the cave. Only those who are true and brave We'll make it into the mighty wind cave <laughs> or something like that. Okay, gosh, I gotta be careful because it might be wet and slippery and it's hard to figure out where exactly the trail goes because we have to get up that waterfall into that opening. I think we can cross right there where there's that kind of ledge. Woo, yeah, right here. Woo, 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 woo. Refreshing. Okay. We're at the entrance to the cave. Here we go. Oh, wow, look at that. That whole mighty waterfall is just trickling out of the rocks right there. I thought it was gonna be like a river flowing all the way through the cave, but no just emerges from the rocks 
I guess there's some little seep right down there. From this little seep springs that whole mighty waterfall. How about that? I feel like there might be a lesson in that. Ooh, this water is so cold. Here, I'll give you some. Woo. All right, let's keep going. Oh wait, there is water coming from up here. There's a little stream on the side too. That explains why it's so chilly. Oh my gosh, it is really cold up in this cave and really dark. I'm gonna have to turn on my headlamp soon. Oh my gosh, I just realized I forgot to worry when I came in through the opening about boulders falling on me. I don't know, the ceiling looks pretty solid to me, although there is that interesting perforation between the two sides. Like it's gonna cleave in half, but yeah, looking at the roof in here, it doesn't look like there's the kind of rocks that would fall, I hope. It's also interesting because I feel like I can hear some birds chirping in here. And you wouldn't expect there to be birds in a cave, would you? I mean, bats, yes, but little chirping birds like that? I don't know. Okay, it's headlamp time. I charged my headlamp last night, so it's got a full battery. And if it happens to die out, well, I've also got the flash on my cell phone. Oh my gosh, wow. Oh, wow, what's that, ice? Oh my goodness, it is. Holy cow, look at that. I told you it was cold in here. It's a big old chunk of ice. Mm -hmm. Now all we need is tequila. Ugh, I wish, maybe later. Gosh, yeah, there's another little seep or something coming out there. There's water all throughout this cave. It's pretty interesting and very chilly. And I did bring my puffer jacket just in case, but honestly, I'm not planning on spending that much time in here. I mean, I think you can actually hike all the way through this thing and then come out the other end somewhere. <laughs> but from what I read online, it's like an advanced route. There's a couple spots that you have to really get down and wiggle through. And I'm really not much for spelunking anyway. So I'm just gonna poke around a little bit, see what I can see. And then, well, if I have time, there's another cave up here I wanna check out. Okay, the cave is getting a lot smaller, a lot narrower, and has a lower ceiling. The farther back we go, I mean, for reference, looking back there, that's the entrance we came in. Seems like a lifetime ago. And I'm not even sure what lies ahead. I'm pretty sure you can climb through this whole thing. And what lies ahead? I don't know. Oh my gosh, this seems like a dead end to me. What? I thought I read online you could hike all the way through this thing. Ooh, and I feel wind coming from that way. Oh my gosh, that little tiny hole must be it. That must be the way you go to get through to the other side. Yikes, man. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh. man, it feels like an air conditioner blowing on me. It's ice cold air blowing out of this. <laughs> hole. <laughs> oh, I guess I might as well just go through. Why not? Oh my goodness, why do I do these things? Okay, wow. I don't know if you can see, but this is extremely low overhead in here. Might be able to tell I'm hunched over and I'm only 5'2". I guess it's about maybe four feet, three and a half feet, and very, very cold. Wow, and it just keeps going back. Oh dear. Uh. Oh yeah, look at that. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for all I know, that monument to those dead women, you know, Betty and Bernice and Orly, well, it might not have been a lightning strike. <laughs> they might have got killed in here. I don't think I have enough time, nor frankly enough interest, to keep going deeper into this cave. Sorry to disappoint all you cave enthusiasts, but you know, there's probably plenty of other YouTube videos you can go watch. And yeah, if I had started this hike earlier, then maybe I would have gone a little bit farther, but as it is, I don't have that much daylight left. And I do want to check out this other cave, which I think might actually be even cooler. And I actually mean that literally because it's an ice cave. That's right, an ice cave, okay? I don't know about you, but I certainly would like to check out an ice cave while I'm up here. And if I make it, I think it's another mile up the trail. If I make it to that, 
It might lessen the sting of your disappointment that I didn't go farther in that other cave. I wouldn't want anyone to think I'm a wonder wussy. I just feel like, you know, I'm up here by myself. Nobody knows where I am. Just doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Although now I do feel a little bit foolish for having gone in with a fully charged headlamp just to explore a cave for 10 minutes. Blessed daylight again. Sure does feel good to be back out in the fresh air after being in that cave, especially back in that little tiny chamber. Gosh, part of me is really curious to come back here with, with a friend, preferably somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to caving, and go farther in there. But I don't know. It's dark and it's cold and there's no wild flowers in there. So I think I'm making the right move for now. <laughs> Okay, Whew. made it down the waterfall and out of the cave. Here's one last look for you at the fabulous wind cave. And you can see what I was talking about, how it was perforated. It almost is like, uh, for some reason, the word episiotomy comes to mind. But it really does look like that cave might cleave in two one of these days. And it's interesting how there's that hole towards the front too. I wonder what caused that, that maybe there's some kind of seasonal waterfall or something that comes through that. Who knows? All I know is I want to try to get to this ice cave, but I'm not sure uh, what the route is. I mean, I have the spot pinned on my map. I think you might have to climb all the way through that cave to get to it. I'm not sure. I'm going to go back down this trail a little ways, and I, I think there was a point where it forked off. And then if I continue on, Maybe I'll get to this mysterious ice cave. Oh my gosh, one thing's for sure. It is a lot warmer out here. And I know I was huffing and puffing and sweating and complaining about how hot I was coming up, but it feels real good after being in that freezing cold wind cave. I can't imagine how cold this ice cave is gonna be. And it just occurred to me too, why it's called the wind cave, because that Arctic wind was blasting out of that little hole in the back. Woo wee Going into that hole was cold as ice. I'll bet some of you guys out there watching this can relate. We've all known a cold cave in our lives. Ah, 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 Woo -wee. This was the toughest part of the entire hike. I basically just had to scramble all the way up this talus slope. Talus slope, I'm not how you should pronounce it. You know what I mean, that loose, crumbly rock. You take one step forward and two steps back and oh, I'm wiped out. But I think I made it to this ice cave. I can't believe people actually hike to this thing because that trail was gnarly. Uh, uh. Oh my gosh. This is spooky. I'll admit, I'm a little disappointed. There's not like ice. What do you call it when it's a stalactite? or a stalagmite, but made out of ice. Icicles, I guess. I'm, I'm disappointed there's not icicles hanging in. I mean, if it's called an ice cave, I want to see some ice. I mean, we saw ice in the freaking wind cave for Pete's sake. Come on, ice cave, live up to your name. Uh, oh, yeah, this is it though. I can tell because there's a sign that says, Darby Ice Cave, danger. Climbing gear necessary to explore cave. Uh, uh, I do not own climbing gear, let alone have any with me. So I'm just gonna poke around the very opening of this thing. Oh my God, so I guess what you're supposed to do is, oh, I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, there's where you come in. There's the warning sign. I guess you would scramble down this rock fall and then climb along the bottom 
and then go all the way up that wall. I don't even know if you can see, but there is an opening at the very top. Uh, let me see if I can get any closer to show you. Okay, yikes. I climbed up on this ledge and there's piles of bat guano. It's pretty gross, but it does give us a great view at the opening to the cave if we were ballsy enough to go in there. And I do see some ice. Can you see that? There's a little white patch. I'll zoom in. Look at that. Plenty of snow, ice, it's nice. In this cave in the middle of July. How about that? Even towards the end of July. Woo, -wee, I'd hate to see this cave in the winter. You know, if you did hike up here in the winter, <laughs> I don't know why you would, but if you did, this thing probably would be full of icicles. And it's actually beautiful. This greenish color, I'm not sure what causes that. I don't think it's lichen. Or maybe it is some kind of weird cave lichen. Or I thought it might be some kind of mineral, but yeah, it's all the way up. All the cool shapes in here. This cave is absolutely beautiful. But like I said, I'm not going any further for a couple of reasons. A, it's almost 6.30 and 6.30 was my hard turnaround time. You know, you're supposed to have a hard turnaround time. Like, well, if I'm not there by 6.30, I have to turn around no matter what. Well, I think it's 6.30 now. So I better head on back down the trail to my car and find a place to camp. But B, the other reason why I'm not going in this cave is, gosh, I was just reading an article about this couple who almost died in here. A few years ago, it was 2018, I think, a couple out of Idaho Falls, which is like two hours from here, they came up here on a Saturday morning. I think they left at 7 a.m. And they hiked all the way up to this ice cave, which again, I'm gobsmacked that anyone actually makes it up here because hiking up that talus slope was so hard and the trail was not evident. You really have to know where you're going. Anyway, this couple from Idaho Falls hiked in here on a Saturday morning and I guess they went way, 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 way back into the ice cave. And they ended up getting lost, okay? And to make matters worse, I think they had gotten wet and they probably hiked to the wind cave first and went in that waterfall, splashed around, whatever. They got wet and so they were wet. Or maybe there's another really cold waterfall inside this cave, I don't know. They got wet somehow. They were stuck in this ice cave overnight. They almost died, but thankfully, I think they told people where they were going to be. And when they didn't come back by that evening, their friends and family got worried. And so the next day, Sunday, they called the search and rescue or whatever. And they came out here and they didn't find them until like, I want to say 11 PM or something. They were, they were in this cave for almost two full days. And when they found them, they said they were almost dead of hypothermia because they were wet. And it's, I mean, it's freezing right here. And I'm Still, you know, standing by the opening. I can only imagine how much colder it gets back there. If it's anything like that wind cave, it's frigid. So not only were they freezing cold, they were soaking wet. I guess they burned their backpacks and anything they had to try to stay warm. And man, they were barely alive. I think what I read, it said they were. They could hardly move or they were barely moving, but I think they were conscious. And I'm pretty sure they both survived. But after reading that story, I am definitely not taking my chances. No, sir. I'm just going to take one last look at this mysterious and beautiful ice cave. And well, I mean, I could tell myself that I might come back here in the future and actually explore this cave, but I don't think I'll ever get that into caving. I don't know. I don't want to have to wear a helmet and ropes and carabiners and all that. Oh, look, I just realized I've been standing by that green stuff this whole time and I don't think it is lichen. It's, it doesn't feel like lichen. It's just some kind of preternaturally green rock. I love it. It's a gorgeous color. The coloring and the light in this cave is amazing. I could stay here all evening. It's already 6.30. I gotta go. Let's get out ski. Back out into blessed daylight for the second and final time. Whew. Made it out of the cave. <laughs> Now I just have to make it down this talus slope, talus slope, and all the way back to my car. Well, if you're watching this video, then I survived. <laughs>